Hello and welcome to this workshop uh, in which I'm going to show you how you can use the point cloud data and the uh, scene that we built in the previous two workshops and deploy it for the Oculus Rift headset so that you can immersively navigate the space also using the touch controllers and uh, get a representation of your hands in this virtual reality environment so that you can um, explore the space and also if you like trigger things interactively such as this wall that if you remember from the last two workshops when we walked through it but at this point we can actually trigger some sound effects or sound events that um, indicate that we have collided with an object in this virtual reality environment. All right, we begin this workshop where we left off in the last workshop, and you can find a link to the tutorial for this workshop in the comment section for this video. So we can just play this scene and then uh, uh, interactively navigate the point cloud data by using the mouse to look around and then using the WASD keys for navigation. So walking forward, left and right, and exploring the space and then if you look at this wall um, straight ahead of us right here if we walk through that wall we can actually trigger a sound and also a message in the little uh, debug bar at the bottom uh, in the bottom left corner of our uh, window here So let's also make this compatible with the uh, Oculus Rift headset and uh, we need to do a few things for that. The first thing is that we can enable the VR settings for this pr project. So we go to edit and then go to the uh, project settings and then in there we check under uh, XR settings in the player section that virtual reality supported is turned on. Alright, we can exit out of this window. And now we also need to make sure that our Oculus headset is connected to the computer. So we start the Oculus app. And then in here we go to the devices setting and make sure that the Oculus Rift is connected. Also that the sensors for the touch controllers are connected. And then later on uh, it's also good to have the left and the right touch sensor connected. If they don't show up in this list or they're not uh, indicated with a green arrow, just pick them up and then push some of the buttons and they should uh, be detected in this list as well. So don't close this window, leave it open, you can minimize it, um, but we will actually need that for um, our next step in uh, Unity. So now I can simply play back this scene and I should already be able to see the point cloud data interactively in my headset put on my headset and then I can still use the WASD keys to navigate in the space and I can use the mouse to look around and I can also use the headset to look around and uh, walk and then at the same time if I for example navigate through this wall I should also trigger uh, the sound again and I should see the notification in the bottom left corner of my player window. Alright, so this is already working pretty well, however I don't have my touch controllers incorporated into this so it's a little bit cumbersome to have the Oculus headset on and interacting with the keyboard and the mouse at the same time. So let's also make sure that we can get the, uh, the Rift touch controllers in here to create an even more um, user-friendly VR experience. So we can do that by going to the Asset Store and importing the Oculus Integration Package. We'll do that in the next step here. Make sure that you're logged into the Asset Store and then you can go to the search field and you can just type in Oculus Integration. And it's actually the first item that's uh, showing up in this list. So you can click on that, get some more information and then you hit the import button in order to get that package imported into your project. So once the import window opens up, just say import to all of these things. And so this might take a while now. Um, just be patient for all of the uh, assets and scenes and prefabs to, uh, to be imported into your project. 
So after the import is done, you're most likely being asked to upgrade some of the plugins and also to restart your Unity editor. So I'll say restart one more time here. Okay, so my Unity editor just came back online again. I restarted it and I can go back to my scene. Um, and I can also take a look at my project window at the bottom of my Unity editor and see that there's a new folder in here which is called Oculus. So this is the place where all of these new scripts and prefabs um, and uh, some of the new functionality for Oculus has been installed into. And so the first thing what we need to do is we actually need to replace our first person shooter controller with an OVR player controller that allows us to actually um, have a more integrated experience with the Oculus headset. So we'll do that in the next step. Double click on the Oculus folder, go to the VR folder in there. In there we find another folder that's called prefabs. And in here we have the OVR player controller that we just drag and drop into our scene. And at the same time, we can delete now our first person shooter controller since it's not needed anymore. If we click on the OVR player controller, we need to do the same thing that we did before with the uh, uh, first person shooter controller. We need to make sure that it's in the right place in our scene. Um, so we probably have to uh, just play with the uh, transforms here a little bit. Just make sure that it sits slightly above the ground. So again, also make sure it's not intersecting with the ground or stuck in the ground because otherwise you'll fall straight through. Um, and if you want to place it directly in the uh, center of this um, circle from our LiDAR scanner, you can also translate it a little bit more uh, along the X and the Z axis. All right, so um, there's one more thing that we need to do before we can actually try this out. And this has to do with uh, the actual rendering of our background again. So if I take a look at my uh, tracking space, uh, when I expand the OVR player controller in my OVR camera rig, you see that we have uh, three uh, eye anchors, one for the left, one for the center, and one for the right eye. And if you take a look at the camera preview, you see that we um, again have our horizon line in there with the skybox and we want to of course have our uh, uniform black background so we can change these settings by clicking on the left eye anchor go to the inspector on the right hand side and then change the clear flags from skybox to solid color and then change the background property for that to uh, solid black we'll do that for all three of these uh, eye anchors change that to solid color change it to black and then last one right eye anchor solid color change that to black as well so at this point we're almost ready to try it out the only thing we still have to do is uh, we have to actually make sure that we set up the new collision detection with this OVR player controller and our cube because as you remember before we had the uh, first person shooter controller attached to the cube right here in our trigger enter script which now if you look at the target property is empty again so you can just grab our OVR player controller and drag and drop that in there. So now uh, the next time I actually intersect with this trigger area right here, I will actually hear that beeping sound through my Oculus headset as well. So we'll try this out. Get the Oculus headset ready and our controllers as well. And um, it will now allow you to use the left touch controller, the thumbstick on there to move around in the space, forward, backward, and then sideways as well. And the forward direction now is always the direction that your headset is looking at. So if you're looking at, for example, the front wall right here, and you want to go through that, uh, you should be able to hear that beeping sound now when you actually pass through that. You can rotate around again and go back into the space and hear that beeping sound one more time. The right touch controller is uh, also active. You can use the thumbstick on there as well and it allows you to rotate your viewpoint around the y-axis in what looks like uh, 30, 45 degree angles. Um, if you're a little bit too lazy to actually use your own rotation of your headset to look around, you can actually do that 
with your uh, thumb controller, the thumbstick on the right touch controller as well. All right, the last thing uh, that I wanted to show you now is how to get your hands into this uh, VR application so that you actually see a representation of the position of your hands and also the gesture of your hands in this VR space. Um, and we can do that by going back to your assets in the project folder, take another look at the Oculus folder and go to the avatar folder in here. In the avatar folder you have another folder called content and we need to go to prefabs and then use the local avatar prefab and attach this as a child to our tracking space right here. So it's in this list in the hierarchy on the left hand side. And the last thing and this is very important is that we actually need to give um, this local avatar an Oculus uh, app ID. Right now it is blank um, and it actually needs a number uh, that's in there. You can actually get a number that um, that Oculus distributes uh, an individual number for each um, of the Oculus users by going to the link that I provide in the comments of this tutorial. But for now, it is just easy enough to go to the Oculus menu uh, right here at the top of your Unity editor and then go to Avatars, Edit Settings, and where it says Oculus Rift App ID, just put in a number such as one. Now, if you try this out and play your scene, you should be able to see your hands in the VR scene as well. Pick up my touch controllers and I see my hands. And at the same time, I can also track gestures in the space um, using the thumb controllers, obviously, making fists, uh, pointing, um, and then still navigating around in the space as well. These gestures don't really trigger anything, but um, you can actually start looking for some tutorials um, on YouTube or other video sharing sites, um, actually on the Oculus website as well and on the Unity website that go a little bit more into the details of how you can use some of these gestures um, as well and then trigger certain kind of events in your virtual reality environment. All right, at this point, we are actually ready to export this application as a standalone program that then you can use for the presentations in this class. And uh, in this last step, we just need to go to File and say um, Build Settings. And in here, we need to include the currently open scene to the scenes in Build. So we just hit the Add Open Scene button need to make sure that the platform is PC, Mac and Linux standalone and that on the right hand side of this selection we have as the target platform our Windows uh, operating system selected. You can then build this and um, build asks you to create or to choose a location where you want to save uh, all of the content to and I would recommend that you create a new folder, um, in my case on the desktop and then uh, save all of the content in there because you'll see there's not going to be only an exe file that is being created but also some um, uh, a data folder and then some other uh, files that are necessary in order to run this for your presentations. So create this empty folder and then specify it, select this folder and compile all of your content in there. So after the compile is done, it will actually show you the location of this uh, folder and the new exe file that you created and we can actually test this out in just a second. Just quickly wanted to go back to Unity and then uh, remind everybody to just save your project one more time just to make sure that all of your changes uh, are actually incorporated into this file. And now we can quit out of Unity and then go to this uh, folder location on the desktop. It's right here, my final AD417 folder. Double click on that and you see that here we have our exe file and then we have some DLL library files and we also have some data files and other things that are required for uh, the standalone project to run smoothly. 
So, in order to test it out, just double click on the EXE file. It asks you for a configuration for your Unity uh, Oculus experience. You can choose a screen resolution in here and basically the higher this resolution, the more computationally uh, expensive or extensive this project is. And then the same for the graphics quality. You can choose some very high uh, render settings in here and they will also be more taxing on the computer as you play this game or as you play this experience. So if you realize that you know, your performance is lagging a little bit in the VR environment, if you get kind of a, a stuttery playback of your images, just experiment with some lower settings for the graphics quality in here or also some lower settings for your screen resolution in order to uh, speed things up a little bit more. So let's hit the play button, put on our headset. You should already see in the background how it's loading everything. Need to grab my controllers and now I'm ready to experience uh, this project on my Oculus headset and I can use at the same time the touch controllers to move around in the scene and then also to trigger things interactively in case of this wall I walk through it so that it actually triggers the sound event and allows me also to re-enter back into this room.